Welcome back to episode five of Rain in Your Herd. Today we want are talking about content batching. In episode three, we talked about picking the right platform or platforms for your business. Now we need to talk about how we are going to create the content for your herd, or also known as your audience. Do you find yourself trying to come up with an Instagram post at the last minute, or maybe you're at the barn washing your tr the troughs or other buckets, and you're like, oh, crap, I forgot to get that Instagram post out. And maybe you just write something up really quickly, and then you post it, and then you have no engagement because the quality of that post was just not there. Maybe you have been working all day at the computer and the last thing you want to do is just jump on, jump on any of your platforms and post something. And maybe now, since you've posted it so late in the day, you're just not going to get any, uh, any action, interaction or engagement. No matter what platform you decided to go with, um, just remember that the key to posting to these platforms is staying consistent. So you want to pick a day or with Instagram, maybe three or four days out of the week and be consistent all those days that you're posting. Or maybe you have YouTube and you've picked um, a certain day of the week that you're gonna um, post videos to that platform. Maybe you've picked Wednesday or maybe you've picked Monday, Wednesday, Friday, but just make sure that you're posting that video at the same time, at the, uh, at the same day every week. Um, research has demonstrated that the switching from one task to the next task takes a serious toll on produ productivity. <laughs> Multitaskers have more trouble tuning out distractions than people who focus on a task at a time. Also, doing so many different things at once can actually impair cognitive, cognitive ability. So it's just saying pretty much that you don't want to be focusing on so many things because you're really not getting that much done and you're just overwhelming yourself and you didn't get burnt out. So what does this have to do with batching? So it's so important to batch because one, it really, really stops you from getting burnt out. For me, at least it does because you pull out your calendar and you schedule out theme days. So I know that the first day of every week for me, I work on blog posts for my clients. Any client that has an open Bill with me, you know, we have, my clients all have blog posts coming out consistently, whether that be um, twice a month or every week. That's my two options that I offer. And so I know that I need to be ahead on blog posts, writing these out for my clients. So Mondays, I'm fresh off the weekend. That's a good day for writing for me. Mondays are all about writing blog posts for clients. So that's my theme for that day. And then I also, and so then going through, I do, um, Tuesdays are for creating social media posts. Wednesdays are for kind of reassessing the week, scheduling, taking care of admin tasks. And then Thursdays and Fridays, I'm able to focus a little bit more on my own business and um, kind of planning ahead, bringing on new clients and catching up on things that maybe came up throughout the week that I didn't um, plan for. But those Mondays and Tuesdays are protected so closely by me. I don't let anything interrupt me on those Mondays and Tuesdays because it's so important that I, my head is in a good space. I get that content done and I don't get burned out while I'm doing it. Now, in my own business, I also have theme days throughout the month. So I know that in the first week of every month, I'm going to batch blog posts. Second week of every month, I'm going to batch social media posts and so on and so forth. I am terrible at sticking to a schedule with anything. Like if something has to be done every day, it has to become a habit. It's not happening in my life. So that's how those theme days really help me out. If I only have to do something once a month, chances of it getting done are so much higher. So batching has been huge for me in my business. Oh yeah, I definitely agree. I have um, theme days too. Um, I have clients that multiple of them have social media posts that I have to create, either create the content and then I have to pick a day that I'm going to schedule out all that content. And usually with multiple clients, I just pick one day and I batch out all of their content. I create all their content in one day and then I go on to any of the schedulers that they're using, either Hootsuite, Planoly, any of those. Um, there's just so many of them that I go on and then I schedule it out for the month or depending on some of my clients I do um, unfortunately have to do it weekly just because of whatever new content is coming out. Um, for myself, I was trying to be consistent um, with YouTube, but 
with being home in Germany or being home in the States, it's kind of got a little wacky. <laughs> yeah. That's why batching is so important. So I did have some videos when I first got home that I could batch out, but it's just been a little crazy. Um, so what I would do is I used to record like three to four videos at once when I would sit down for my theme day. And then I'd pick another day that I would edit all those videos and then I would create either the descriptions for them or the tags for them, the SEO Oh, and then I would also create the thumbnails for them. Yeah, that's so important. April and I knew that we were going to be pretty strapped when we decided to do this podcast. This is, it's a side hustle on top of our side hustles. <laughs> but we also knew that it was really important to get this podcast out here and do it. So we're batching the podcast. Every other week we get together, we record two episodes. We are batching, you know, each one of us takes the head on each episode so that you know, we can really lean on each other and help get this done. But then we also, you know, I batch, I create all of the graphics for um, our Instagram, our Facebook site. We create, she batches when she edits the episodes so that they're done ahead of time and they're scheduled out because we would be going on long, lengthy months of absences if we were trying to do these, you know, every other week, get together, record and do all that in one go for each episode. Right. Yeah. Cause life happens too. Like, well, um, <laughs> and it has happened to us. Like we've had to reschedule when we we're going to batch them out, but it wasn't going to throw off how our episodes were coming out. Cause we already had batched some previously. So they were already going live and we could reschedule when we were going to batch the podcast, but because the other ones were already going up and we had batched those, it was okay. So exactly. it's good to be prepared. <laughs> life has gotten in the way more times than it hasn't. But we yes, still yes. have yet to miss a day of, of our scheduled every other Friday um, postings because we're giving ourselves that about a week and a half cushion to get it done. Right. right. And we've told our audience this is when the podcasts are going out. So we are going to make sure they're going out when we said so. Yes. yes. <laughs> All right. So now that we've talked a little bit about batching, let's do a little bit of a pony update um, for myself. Um, let's see. Uh, King, my horse, I've gone out and seen him a couple times now, and I was hoping to do, like, uh, I talked about the last episode, or, yeah, is it the last episode? <laughs> now that we're batching, now we're talking We're batching, about. it's been so long, we don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I was going to go do a Western dressage show, but I decided not to because we're just been, I haven't been able to get out there as much as I would like to because I've been sick and had sinuses. And then one week I had like this thing called the norovirus where it was like a complete awful, uh, horrible stomach flu day. And I was just in bed all day. So the summer here is kicking my butt and you'd think I'd be used to it since I grew up here, but obviously not. Um, so I haven't been able to get out to the barn as much as I would like to, but the last ride I had with him was amazing because um, we were completely connected all this summer. Every time I rode him, I felt like we weren't on the same page. So it it's not easy for me to ride him when I think like he's distracted about everything else going around. Like I'd rather just do groundwork and try to get on the same page than ride him and feel like something's going to happen. And we're just Absolutely. Not <laughs> yeah. So I was very happy with our last ride for sure. What about you, Laura? Well, MJ and I have had an event for the last couple weeks. So I am going to tell a bad story on myself. I was a bad horse mom. (laughs) (laughs) But the day before I left for my week-long vacation last week, I'd been putting a bareback pad on her. She'd been doing super well. I'd been leaning on her, no problems. She's been great. So I'm okay, it's time for the saddle. And it was. It was time for the saddle. It was just my stupidity that caused this to not go quite as well as I was planning. Um, But I put... So DT, my first horse, the only horse that I have a lot of experience saddling regularly, was had kind of funky confirmation. He was really short-backed Arab. And so I had no choice but to put the cinch kind of up in his armpits because there was no, like, I would be, had been sitting on his butt, basically, had I set the saddle any further back than that. Um, So that was just normal for him. And, you know, he never showed any signs of pain. You never know. That's kind of just how I, that's how I, I envisioned where the cinch should go. I put the saddle on. It's how I did it every time. And so I go to put the saddle on MJ. I do the same thing. And I'm lunging her, and I'm looking at the saddle, and I'm like, it kind of looks like the saddle is on this poor horse's neck. <laughs> like, oh, what no. is going on? Because I put it, the cinch right up in her armpit. Turns out when you have a full-size horse, not a pony, that cinch can go about four inches back very happily. 
<laughs> not a problem. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep, yep. So I'm looking at this. I mean, the saddle is hopping all over the place. And I know, like, I don't really want to tighten that cinch anymore. I think it's plenty tight. But, I mean, the saddle's on the neck, so it's just not. <laughs> Well, um, and so my husband and I are looking at this and we're like, okay, something is good. But she's, we put her up in all four gates, go both directions, lunge her, no problem. She's good as gold. So at <laughs> this point, funny. my like mindset of getting the horse used to the saddle has gone out the window. Like I put the horse on the saddle, the saddle on the horse very badly and it went fine. So I'm not like thinking about the fact that she might be upset anymore. I'm like, okay, I just have to get the saddle set on her properly. So I'm um, thankfully there was another full size horse saddled up, tied, waiting to go in the round pen. So I checked him out and realized, okay, this saddle needs to go way back. So I took the saddle off, repositioned it, got it, set it on. All of a sudden it's like, oh my gosh, the saddle fits really well. <laughs> I was really happy about that. Put it, but then of course put it back on, cinch it up, go to loper, and the bucking explosion happens. And I felt so bad because, you know, she there was probably signs that she wasn't comfortable and I was missing them because I was rushing because there was a lesson waiting to happen. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I was now just like, I got to make sure the saddle fits. I forgot to make sure that she was good with it. And yeah, crash and burn. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. We're, (laughs) it happens. We're We're making progress from going forward again. (laughs) Yeah. I've been, um, it's weird because I even mentioned it to my mom the other day. Like I, every time I lunge him or do some groundwork, um, he's every time we go counterclockwise, he likes to like crow hop and I know he's not doing it to be mean or misbehave. I think he's uncomfortable. And I think what has happened is he's been playing out in the pasture. Cause everybody, every time I say anything on social media or anything, like he comes up to me and stuff, they're like, Oh, I've been seeing him run around doing crazy things and bucking. And I'm like, he probably threw something out and needs to be like adjusted or something. Cause every time I, yeah. I counter canter him, he's just crow hopping a little bit and, and it's, I'll stop him and restart him, and he does it throughout the whole time. So I'm like, okay, you need to get adjusted, I think. So that's it happens interesting. <laughs> that, yeah, you know what? I maybe should have someone look at MJ because she's always kind of crow hopped on that lead. And when the saddle was on, that's when the big bucking happened. So I wonder. She could be mm-hmm. out. Sometimes. Mm-hmm. Oh. Who knows? Especially with, and you never know what they do out in the pasture. That's for sure. Oh yeah, no, you never know. We're always trading something. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we've talked about our pony loves, um, our horses. So let's get back into batching. Let's get started. Let's. I'm going to give you an action plan so you can get started and you can um, incorporate batching into your business. Um, so. Pull out your calendars. Well, not unless you are driving or at the barn. You can come back to this part of the podcast. Um, in the next two weeks or 14 days, you can just pick one day or even two days. You are going to batch your content. So you're going to be looking at your calendar and you might pick uh, maybe, let's say, like August 6th. Um, and you are going to say we're going to use example for um, YouTube videos or you We'll just go with YouTube videos. So on August 6th, you are going to create or you're going to record multiple videos. You, um, I recommend you want to schedule out for four to eight weeks. Sometimes six weeks is kind of like the happy number. So on August 6th, you're going to record six videos. Now, that seems like a lot, but you'll be happy that you got it all done in one day and you were in that mindset and you were focused on just that one project for the day. And then um, you could pick another day that you're going to edit them and um, that you're going to do all your descriptions and schedule them out. And then you can schedule them out for each week going forward, um, especially if you're only having one video go out a week. Um, of course, if you have three or four videos going out, you're going to have to create a lot of more videos and you may spread it out uh, between two different days. Um, and just remember that this day that you're recording your videos, this is not the day that you're going to brainstorm on what you're going to talk about or um, what you're going to say, what the topic is. This is another theme day that needs to be happening before. Um, so maybe you schedule that out on your calendar, maybe August 3rd or um, 5th or whatever, before you're going to do these videos that you're going to brainstorm um, your topics and such. And this shouldn't take as long. It should just be a quick, um, this is what I'm going to do. You're going to want to have your intro, your outro, kind of have all that set up. So this would also... Um, so now that you have your videos and you have them all scheduled out for the next four to six weeks, 
Um, you want to make sure that you're not missing. Um, you want to make sure that you're staying on top of it for the next go round. So two weeks before um, those content or those videos are going to stop going out. So eight, say you posted them out for eight weeks. The sixth week you want to stop, schedule out another time that you are going to create another four to six videos and record those videos and then have those scheduled out and just keep the process up. You can almost have these go out. You can almost be prepared to have them out for six months or so if you stay on top of this type of schedule. And then you won't have to worry if life happens or something goes on or an emergency happens and you're already prepared to move forward. Laura, do you have any examples on maybe blog posts or Instagram? Yeah, so I have this kind of pet peeve where I always feel like the busiest time of my life is during the holidays and I hate it because I'm like, I just want to sit on the couch next to my family with a cup of hot cocoa and enjoy it. And I never feel like I can do that. So I'm on a mission this year to buy August or by November, by August, that's not happening. By November 1st, I want all of my content for November, December, and January to be done and scheduled and set so that I can enjoy the holidays. Um, so I'm going to do that by batching. And I think it's really important. I'm super guilty of forgetting to schedule time to do all the pieces. So I say, okay, I'm going to create blog posts today. So I schedule a time to sit down and write them, but I don't, I forget to schedule that time to plan, to create the graphics, to edit, to create the freebie that goes with it and to schedule. So I'm implementing a new system starting in August that I think is going to really help. So planning is my first batching. Again, that's going to be shorter. So maybe I'm going to sit down for, you know, two hours and plan all three months of that content. And then on another complete separate day, I'm going to set aside a whole day, maybe even two days because it's three months of content for creation. So that's what I'm going to write. And that takes a lot of energy. So I need to give that batch the most time. And then I'm going to put them all down and walk away because I don't ever want to publish something after the first go of writing. So I'm going to come back a couple days later. And again, I'm going to do this over the course of a whole day is editing and creating the graphics for them. So now I have the posts really nice, set up, ready to go. The graphics are done. And then I'm going to set aside another half a day on another time to get them scheduled. Batching allows you to just focus in on that one day instead of creating content throughout the week and just feeling fumbled in that you're not in control of what's going on with your business. So this just allows you to feel like you're in control. When you have a batching system in place, you will feel like a weight lifted off your shoulders. So we want to see what kind of content batching you're doing. So make sure you go on Instagram or you can go on Facebook and tag us in your stories or in any of your posts because we would love to see it. And we will share it on our, our, on our own Instagram account, uh, Rain in Your Herd. So make sure you tag us. Go out there and get started and Rain in Your Herd.